Hi, my name is Dustin, and I play the viola, and I'm the principal violist of the Reno Philharmonic, and this is Case Files. This is my viola case, and in it has my instrument and some accessories that make it sound. Let's take a look. Okay, ready? Here we go. So this is like a special case because it's a mini cello case. It looks like a cello case, but it's actually a viola case. Ta-da! I have a little blankie that goes on top of my viola, helps keep them nice and warm. And then a little cloth to wipe off the rosin that accumulates. And this is my viola. So my viola was made in 1950. A maker in New York City, his name is Berger, spelled B-E-R-G-E-R. -E so I just call my viola the Berger, kind of like a hamburger. Now the thing that's kind of cool about violas is, is there's no full-size viola. A violin can have a 4-4 full size or a cello can have a 4-4 full size, but violas come in all different sizes, usually somewhere in between 14 inches and on up to 17, 17 and a half inches, which is huge for a viola. But this one is about 16 and three quarters. It's a big viola, but it's not too big. I have two bows in my case. This is the bow that I use most of the time. This was made in London in 1905 by a maker called W.E. Hill and Sons. It was a very, very old bow. My bow is special because it has a little repair at the tip. It has two little pins that run down the front because at some point, the owner that had it before me, they cracked it a little bit. And the violin shop put in these pins so that it would never break again. You tighten it up here. You turn this little thing behind the frog. This is called the frog. You tighten up the bow hair, and then it's able to make a sound on the viola. This is my shoulder rest. This goes on the back of the viola, and this helps to keep the viola stable on my shoulder so it doesn't fall off. Okay, so now I'm going to put it together and show you how viola makes sound. So I'm going to take my viola, I'm going to use the shoulder rest, and that goes on the back kind of like that. It has a nice curve to it that fits the body so it can fit nicely on my shoulder, kind of like that. This is called the chin rest. Shoulder rest, chin rest. The chin rest makes sense. That's where my chin goes. My bow is made up of horse hair that runs all down here, and I tighten it like that. That will tighten up the horsehair so that it can bounce. Bows do a lot of things. They can play long sustained notes or they can play short bounce notes, which I'll show you. A viola makes sound while the horsehair is going across the string. And as you're passing the bow over the string, those little tiny microscopic hairs are pulling and grabbing the string and setting it into motion. So what we do is we draw the bow in between this part, which is called the bridge, this part, which is called the fingerboard. As long as we keep the bow in between there, we'll make a good sound. So the viola has four strings. It has an A string, D string, G string, and C string. The C string is kind of what makes the viola special. In the orchestra, you have the violins that play the parts that are way up high. You have the cellos that play the parts that are way down low. And the violas, they play somewhere in the middle. This is the A, the D, the G, and the C. What happens is, is to make the notes change, the string length runs from the bridge all the way up here, which is called the nut. When I put a finger down, it shortens the string length and makes the pitch go up. And as I move my left hand higher and higher, you'll hear the pitch go higher. Make it go lower, I just go down low like this. I use all four fingers to play, and sometimes we use a technique called vibrato. That means we put the finger down and we oscillate our hand like this. I'll play one note with, with non-vibrato, and then I'll play it with vibrato. So when I wobble my hand, it wobbles the string length to make it longer and shorter really quickly, and that's what gives the effect of vibrato, and it really helps make a note more beautiful. Viola also has this part here. This is called the tailpiece. This is what you connect the strings into, and these parts right here. Notice that they look like the letter F, so we call them F holes. When we're making a sound on the viola, the vibrations go into this part, the wooden part called the bridge. Now the bridge is not glued down, it's free to move, but the tension on the strings keep the bridge in place. The bridge vibrates the top of the instrument, this wooden part here, and then inside there's a post that runs from the top of the instrument to the bottom of the instrument, and that translates the sound down to this part of the viola, the back plate. And so all together inside of the resonant chamber of the viola is what's making the sound. And then it's all coming out the F holes there when you play. 
When we tune the instrument, we use these things right here. These are called coarse tuners, and these change the pitch a lot. And then down here, we have these little tuners here. I have one on my A string and on my C string. These are called fine tuners, and they only change the pitch a little bit. When I'm tuning my viola, I'll often tune this note first, the A, and then I'll tune the rest of the strings to that one. get it close, then I can reach in here and use the fine tuner to get it just perfect. Okay, so now that we've done with viola, let's see what else is in my case. I have a set of extra strings. Can break a string on a viola. Doesn't happen quite that often. Does really make a loud sound when it does happen. So in here, I have four extra strings. Remember I told you about the A string, the D string, the G string, and the C string. I have one of each, just in case. This is a little satchel of some herbs and just helps to make my case smell really nice. And here is my accessories pocket. And here I have some important things that every string player needs to have. This is rosin. So rosin is a hardened tree sap that we use on our bow so that those microscopic horsehair things that grab the string so they can really grab even better. I take my bow and I run it across the surface of the rosin, kind of like that. And then I pull it across the string and it helps make a stronger, more direct and grabby sort of sound. I also have in here another thing that's really, really important is these earplugs. I have some music clips just in case we have to do a show that's outside. It's usually windy or something like that. So we have these hold our music, scotch tape, just in case you need to tape part together at the last second. I also have under here my iPad and my Bluetooth pedal. So on my iPad, I have my entire music library and I can open it like that. And there you can see a piece of music. At the beginning of each line of the music here, you can see this little symbol right there. That's called a viola clef. Each instrument has their own clef that's special to them. Violins have treble clef, violas have viola clef, and cellos and basses have bass clef. All instruments are capable of reading and playing other clefs, but these are the ones that are most native and comfortable to our instrument. This is my Bluetooth pedal. This wirelessly connects to my iPad and I can turn the pages with this. If I wanna turn the page to the left, I hit this pedal. If I want to turn the page back, I can hit this pedal. Okay, so that's it. Hope you've enjoyed this. I've really been my pleasure to share this with you. Thanks for watching Case Files by the Reno Phil.